Oh, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't think we're the same. I was hoping we are the same. Uh, okay, let me take the notebook. Out. Handy notebook. I came straight from, uh, from politics, so excuse me, because I was having a conference, uh, press conference with Myanmar this morning. Mm -hmm. it was interesting. You ready, sir? Yes. Okay. Wait a minute, let's see. Can I, can I take your card? Yes. Because uh, I, I, before I do I forget. Okay, good. Right. So, very simple. Um, oh, it's here in my hand. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So let me make sure that we are, we are aligned. Okay. So talk is quite informal. Yeah. So it's it's not like anything from here. So just want to make sure. Sorry, just want to make sure that I get it right. Okay. Okay. You you ready? Okay, I'm ready. I'll count to three. We, we look at the camera, just a uh, camera, and I will introduce you first. Okay. And after that, my introduction, I'll turn to you and we just speak. You don't have to look at the camera, but do throw your voice, it will it'll help. So, um, do I address you as a Professor Magnus Fredrickson? Well, I'm not your professor yet, but. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. Hopefully. Oh, okay. I'm a senior, senior lecturer. lecturer. Yeah. Okay. So, do I, address, I have to address you as Mr. Magnus Fredrickson? Yeah. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. And uh, so University of Gothenburg. Yeah. Okay. No problem. So okay. So we shall begin. One, two, and three. Hi, welcome to the National Quiz Choice Online News. I'm Robin Steinberg, and welcome to my show again. Today we are going to discuss uh, the issues about what populations are all about, and of course the confusion between uh, populations and journalism. For most uh, people in Asia, they have often take two jobs. Uh, you know, really, some say it's a conflict of interest, but today, uh, the professor from Mac, uh, sorry, repeat, I just, um, just take two, take two, sorry about that, it happens. <coughs> problem. I need to keep myself, <laughs> this is last minute, you see, that's what happens when we do this. One, two, and three. Hi, welcome to the National Quiz Choice Online News. I'm Robin Steinberg, and welcome to the Steinberg Review. Today we have a wonderful professor uh, who's going to share with us about the populations and journalism uh, that's happening around the world, and it's become a phenomenal uh, subject. Uh, what is journalism and populations? Um, the prof the uh, sorry, one more time. Cut again. Take three. One, two, and three. Hi, welcome to the National Quiz Choice Online News. I'm Robin Steinberg, and welcome to the Steinberg Review. Today, we are going to discuss about what is public relations and journalism, and the conflict between these two uh, uh, wonderful uh, jobs that has been in question by many in Asia. Today, we are having uh, Mr. Magnus Fredrickson, who is from the University of Gothenburg, Department of Journalism and Media and Communications, who is going to tell us uh, more about uh, these two wonderful uh, job scopes, and he's actually a senior lecturer uh, for, the, for the Department of Journalism and he's going to give us some insights on this issue. Sorry, let me repeat one more time. It's, it's, it's not right. It's just not right. So, take, take four. One, two, and three. Hi, welcome to the National Quiz Choice Online News. Welcome to the Steinberg Review. Uh, today we have a... Uh, we have a sorry, take five. I'm sorry. It's, it's my fault. It's my fault. Take five. One, two, and three. Hi, welcome to the National Quiz Choice Online News. Welcome to the Steinberg Review. Today, uh, I have a professor, well, going to, that is, uh, Mr. Magnus Fredrickson, a senior lecturer for University of Gothenburg, who's going to discuss with us uh, more about what is public relations and also the difference between public relations and journalism today. Um, Mr. Magnus uh, Fredrickson, thank you for joining us here at the National Quiz Choice. 
many have asked about uh, what is populations and journalism, and what, uh, what is the, the difference between these two professions? Um, well, there are major differences, I would say. Um, when it comes to public relations, it's communication on behalf of an organization to um, help the organization to, to, uh, to gain its goal and, and, and be able to, to uh, perform. And, in certain cases to sell its products, in other cases it would be to gain or to win a, an election maybe. Uh, on the other hand then we have journalism that is there to, to scrutinize organizations and to, to uh, ask questions and to see whether they are doing what they're supposed to do and, and, and things. So they are, I would say, rather different aspects. But of course then in everyday life, uh, in many countries all over the world, I would say that there are people that, you know, are in between because journalism as a practice is also used as public relations in certain cases. You have uh, customers' magazines, you have uh, employee magazines and so forth where you are using the techniques of journalists by writing and presenting material uh, but still it's some kind of other kinds of communication I would say. Now, is there a conflict of interest for a journalist to hold a position as a public relations officer? Can, can that be done? Um, well, on an individual level, maybe yes, but not at the same time. Um, if you're working as a freelancer, uh, a freelance journalist, I, I, you know, and, and, and also assigned for PR uh, assignments, I, I think you will have a problem uh, in, in the long run. Um, where I come from then in Sweden, there's been a big debate as there are quite a lot of journalists going over to the other side, so to speak. Um, but I can't really see a problem on the longest scale that a person should be able to shift from journalism to PR and from PR to journalist, but at the, at the moment that where she's doing her or his job, then there, there must be be, uh, be um, a clear cut line between those two. Otherwise, I think we will have problems in the future. Yeah. Now, let's move forward to public relations. What is public relations uh, today, and in the Swedish uh, perspective, how can this apply uh, for Asia? Can Asia adopt uh, some some of its best practices? Uh, from Sweden? Um, well, I don't know if, if the practices that we use in Sweden is the best one that is usable in, in Asia um, because PR and other forms of communication has to be adopted to the social and economical and cultural uh, circumstances, so to speak. Um, when it comes to PR in Sweden today, I think most of it is basically the same as I've seen here. It's, you know, it's about media relations and, and getting attention for ideas, political issues or for, 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 for products or services. Uh, I think most uh, PR professionals in Sweden work with the same kind of issues and the same kind of methods as people here do. Um, although we have a long tradition of a, of a, a, a rather, um, what would you say, um, where it has been used then by, by the government as well in relationship to citizens uh, and so forth, of course. Now, what is the, the kind of responsibilities uh, that may have asked, does the public relations officer uh, do? And, and what kind of duties and, and the kind of performance are they expected? Um, well, as far as I know, when it comes to Sweden, um, I would say that most people do work with media relations, you know, writing press releases, um, doing interviews with journalists, um, creating media events, press conferences and so forth. I, I think that is main, the main bulk, so to say, of, of the work done on PR departments or among PR, PR uh, consultancies. But of course there are other issues or other things as well uh, when it comes to investor relations for instance you know as, as more and more uh, focus uh, in the world economy on, 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 on the, 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 the global stock exchanges of course it becomes more and more important to have good relationship to your to analysts or to the, to the shareholders uh, and of course when you talk about CSR and other societal issues uh, communication becomes an, a rather important aspect of that as well but the main, the main work still, though, I, I, I think in most cases would be, would be some kind of media work or media relations. Now, you spoke about dialogue today and the definition of dialogue. Uh, 
could you give us uh, some insights on how important dialogue uh, between the video relations uh, and the public relations play in today's uh, context? Well, I don't think you have a dialogue there. Uh, you, you can talk about interactivity, I think. I think it's better to describe it as an interactivity where certain or different actors are interacting with each other. But, but as far as I'm concerned, dialogue is much something much more um, complex and something much more uh, idealistic than, than interactivity. So, so I, I, I prefer not to use the concept, especially that coming from, from Europe, I think, you know, where, where the word in itself has a rather strong connotations to, to where everyone is given the same chance to, to, to express their feelings and their, uh, their ideas and, and to bring up issues they want to bring up and, and, and so forth. Uh, and I don't think that that kind of situation is that common when it comes to organizations. Today. So um, I think we, uh, we are better off if we talk about interactivity. Uh, uh, now, when you mention inter uh, being interactive, yeah. you know, what is the definition for being interactive for Sweden and also for the world? Well, it's to be adoptive, I think, you know, being able to answer questions from if you work for an organization, for instance, being able to answer the question from journalists or from customers or, you know, um, today when more and more of the communication is taking place on, on the Internet, via Facebook or other platforms, uh, you need to be able to, to answer the questions you get. Uh, it's been a, some really interesting, interesting, but there has been some cases for the, for the last few months in Sweden where, for instance, as, uh, organizations have a Facebook site or co corporations have a Facebook site and there's been coming up uh, you know, critical issues or critical questions and they don't answer them, uh, then you, as far as I'm concerned, then you have, haven't really grasped the idea of, of being on the, on, on, on the net, so to speak. But also, you, know, you, you, you have the traditional no comments from, from a, a manager or, or from a, a politician when it comes from questions from a, a journalist, and, 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 and then you've got the same problem. I would say. Uh, you need to be able to answer questions, and but also raise questions, of course. If you do have an interest as an organization, whether you are a corporation, a non-NGO or something else, you know, being able to, to direct your questions to those who, who should be able to, to answer them as well. Now, is it true that there are cases where if duty calls for, do, do journalists often undermine uh, the public relations uh, you know, protocols and they get the information directly to the source? Uh, and is it is it is that the right thing to do? Um, I would say that, as far as I'm concerned, that most organisations today are trying to not put up the PR people in front of the organisation. They they would they would would rather direct questions to to those who can answer them. I would say, at least in Sweden, there are of course situations where where you they use the PR professional to answer the questions, but. In most cases, I think you want the, the, the you want the best answer. That, that is also part of being interactive, and of course, and, and you want to have the right answer, and you want to have the best answer. And uh, the the communicator or the PR professional is is seldom the most competent in the issue in itself. Um, so often, then he or she then would would, would uh, put the the question forward to to the one who could answer it. I would say. And that, as far as I'm concerned, would be the best advice I could give as well. You know. Now, moving forward about journalism, what is the scope work of a journalist? You know, because most people out there, especially Asia, uh, as an emerging market, you know, countries like Myanmar, Vietnam, Laos, uh, sometimes even uh, in Malaysia, many have perceived wrongly what is the journalist. You know, they think journalist is being probably uh, perceived as someone who writes reports about uh, uh, tabloids and so forth. Mm -hmm. Is that journalism? You know, what is journalism? Uh, uh, really, has, jo has journalism changed? It has changed dramatically, I would say, uh, in, 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 different, in different ways, in, 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 in different aspects as well. Um, and the definition of journalism, well, there's a big fight, I would say. It, it depends. I, you know, first of all, you, you need to remember that the media systems all over the world are different as well, you know, whether we have the freedom of press and, and, and what role the press have in society in general. 
you have different kinds of, 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 uh, of journalists depending on what medium you are using as well. You know, writing for a newspaper is something differently, working for a TV channel, for instance, and, and things like that as well. There are different logics behind. Uh, if you work for a TV station, you need moving images. You don't need that as a newspaper journalist. It means that you can do other things as a journalist for, for a newspaper uh, and things like that. But, but where I come from, then uh, I would say that 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 the journalist the, is the attorney of the people. You know, he's, he's there to to dig in or get the things up to the surface that you wouldn't be able to talk about otherwise. Uh, that would be the main function of journalism. Uh, but of course, there are other roles as well. You can't really put that expectations on all journalists. If you are a sports journalist, for instance, you know, your, your, your task might be different. And if you work with, with uh, features and, 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 and the, 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 uh, when it comes to, to entertainment, for instance, there might be other issues as well, that it's to, or other uh, tasks that might be more important than digging into the dirt, so to speak. But, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the role of journalists would be to making it possible for people to know things that they wouldn't know if they were no journalists. So, are you saying that even if someone creates a Facebook uh, page and this person starts posting you know, images and texts and videos or even like a YouTube channel, is that considered as journalism? I don't know. I, uh, I can say whether question comes from and, and, and there is a big debate going on of course uh, mm -hmm. do you need a certain training for instance to be a journalist or yes. do you need to work for a for an organization that is providing news or other forms of media material and well if you say yes to those no that is not journalism uh, and in for instance where I come from being a journalist is something that is protected by the law you know you are accredited as a journalist. It gives you certain rights, it gives you certain freedoms, and you are saved from certain things. You can, for instance, hide your sources. Um, you don't have to tell from where you have got your information, for instance, even though the if the police ask. Uh, so it means that you are saved. And, and just being a blogger then, or putting up things on Facebook or in YouTube, doesn't make you a, a journalist then, in, in that specific case, so to speak. But of course, if you if you accept the the definition I put up forward slightly earlier on saying that a journalist is someone who dig dig up things that you we wouldn't know otherwise, then of course a blogger could be a journalist. So I, I I think we still we have a rather traditional view on what a journalist is, but in the future I, there might be differences, of course. But it's also you know the the. What, what, what do you do then? And, and, and that is a big issue in, in Sweden at the moment. Then what, what happens then with the, 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 uh, the legal protection, for instance, you know, about, example, for example, then about not being forced to, be, to, to tell your sources and things like that. So, of course, there is a complexity there. And mm -hmm. as the, the media change, the role of journalism will change as well. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking about the role of journalism and the role of the public relations, what do you see in the coming years? Uh, you know, will the role of public relations and journalism change as technology you know, continues to progress? And it seems to me that as technology progress, such as Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, begins to merge together uh, alongside with even Google+, uh, do you foresee uh, that journalism will become the, the, the people's, uh, people's uh, you know, uh, forum rather than a corporate forum. In other words, do you think tra traditional uh, and conventional journalism will be phased out and therefore because of virtual reality and virtual technologies like Facebook will, will undermine the new form of journalism? Yeah, well I don't know to be honest. Um, I think it's difficult to foresee what will happen in the future. What we can see now then is that the role, the roles in society are changing, and that is not just you know applied for for, for journalism and PR. You can see that in in, in a number of different fields, uh, and 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 what that will lead to, I don't really know, uh, and I, I think no one could really say that. Of course, there are also interests here saying that 
some interest as those who are journalists today, they would of course then uh, keep, you know, journalists related to journalists. And that, that, that is then a, a demarcated group, a, a specific group in society that have a, have a task uh, to accomplish. Um, whether it would be like that or not, I don't know. Um, one issue at the moment, for instance, is whether it would be possible for uh, online news to get paid for what they are doing. You know, that is the main issue, because if you are a journalist, then you are hired by someone. To do your job, you know, you, you write for a newspaper or a TV channel, but if the TV channel or the newspaper not get paid for it, then you won't get any salary. And what will happen then, then with journalism, for instance? That is one issue we can see here. And of course, if a number of other individuals and interests and groups and organizations have the abilities to to uh, present their view on things, uh, is there a need for journalism then? I don't know. Uh, but it is an interesting time to live in. So it's yes. Now, talk. speaking about transparency and journalism and even public relations, today you, you shared about transparency. Now, now, could you elaborate to us how much transparency is good for the society and corporations and individuals? You know, is, is that a good thing? Or must, it, must governments or, or regulators regulate transparency? You know, and and is, it, is it right? What is your definition? Mm, well, I think transparency on a general level is good. We need transparency. We need to know what happens in different situations. Uh, it shouldn't be possible for politicians or, or managers in corporations to hide behind the closed doors. Uh, because then you won't be able to, to, to question their decisions or so forth. But of course there is a limit to when transparency becomes a problem. Uh, we all know that if you are, if you always are uh, watched by someone else, you would behave differently. And there are kinds of discussions that has to be behind closed doors, of course. Uh, um, after WikiLeaks, for instance, we know that it could cause problems if everything is coming up to the surface, and, and, and you you must be able to know that there are. Uh, rooms where things that you say there will stay there on an individual level uh, but as well as an organization level um, but where the line is then is again I, I don't know that you can come up with one solution for that line I, I think that line will shift over time and it may, might be different for different kinds of organizations and different kinds of situations as well but it must there must be situations where we have closed doors, yeah. Otherwise, we, we we won't be able to survive as human beings, more or less. On the other hand, today I don't think the problem is that it is too much transparency. I think the problem is the other one that we have too. We need more transparency, I think. Now, what advice would you give uh, for aspiring journalists as well as aspiring uh, public relations uh, uh, executives graduating from universities or those who wish to embark on this new profession? Uh, would you be able to give uh, probably three key advice uh, when they decide to embark on the profession and what they should do and look up for? Um, I think one really critical issue for both those groups is that you need to know more than just your profession. As a, ma as a journalist you need to know about society, how it works, what is the important bits and pieces, uh, how does politics function, how does uh, corporations function. To be able to do a good job, you really need to know about those you are there to, to uh, investigate on. Um, and it means that you need to know more than just journalism. And the, the, the same, I think, applies for PR professionals as well. If you are going to work for an organization, you need to know more than just communication. You need to understand the organization you work for and you need to understand the society that the organization is a part of. And that means that you need to understand the, the uh, even though you work for a corporation, for instance, you need to understand the, the effects of culture and social issues and, and other fun, kinds of norms and religion and, and things like that to be able to understand the role that the organization has in society. Otherwise, you will be do a bad job. Now, what would be the one thing that you see in Singapore and probably even Asia that is lacking but could learn the very one thing from Sweden. Um, oops, that was a bad one. Um, 
Well, I think, you know, I don't, I don't know if I have a good answer for that one. Uh, no, that's okay. There, there, is, there are, although it's interesting differences, and I've been traveling extensively in the area before. I've been to, to Malaysia, I've been to Vietnam, I've been to, to Thailand and so forth. Um, um, so there are differences, but um, at, after 14 days here now in Singapore, I think I bring back as much back home I've learned from here than what I might be able to to, to, to help. Or it, so, it, so, it, it sounds like the freedom of speech is lacking here in, in, in Asia. Yeah, it could be. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I haven't felt that you can't say what you think, but obviously though, I have had some interesting conversations about where you draw the line for the free speech, yeah, it's been, and normally I wouldn't have those in Sweden, so that's, that's interesting. So, so do you think that the freedom of speech could be a good thing for Asia, especially countries like Malaysia, Singapore and, and Oh yeah, Japan. yeah, yeah, well, well for me that's, that of course is a problem. Um, you know, transparency is one thing, and we talked about it earlier, but, but of course the, the, the ability of expressing oneself and, and one's opinions is a rather, you know, that, that's the foundation of a free society. Um, but of course you can't just, you, you need to be able then also to give people the tools to, to use this freedom as well. You know, people need education, people need to be trained to it. Um, um, and because that is often a reason or an argument used by those who try to keep the, the closed doors and, 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 and not giving giving others the, the freedom is that saying that well they don't know how to do it but they will learn them then. Well once again uh, Mr. Magnus Ferguson thank you for joining us here at the National Quiz Choice and sharing us uh, updates on what uh, journalism and uh, public relations are moving forward in, into the future um, and really it's quite insightful. And uh, thank you for, for joining me here at the National Quiz Choice, the Steinberg Review, and have a good week ahead. And please don't forget, uh, if you're looking for a job, please do know your job and find out more what it's all about. Once again, have a good week ahead. Bye. Ah, I shall edit that and bits here and there. Yeah. It's a very interesting uh, 